Uh, last year when this game came out, uh, I went through all the characters in mission mode. Mission mode's really good. And we went through two of every move basically because mission mode has like the easy mission the hard mission so it ends up being like how to punish two things from every character so we want to do it again because th some things change right something's changed since then there are more characters we had uh, a couple of patches since then okay so first soul this is a soul classic so i would very much recommend that you have a response to this so the main re reason being that this is an advantageous poke, it's plus two, it sets up his offense. His offense is pretty straightforward, but it's strong because it's it's established off advantage frames. The main thing is that this move from start to finish is pretty fast, but the good news is for whatever reason, honestly, because I think they're just kind of swinging and it's not like easy to do this, but soul players, they will usually stop whiffing it on the second one. Maybe you'll have a wild boy who, who goes for this, but uh, they'll usually stop on the second one. The weakness of this move is that he's vulnerable in his legs, so you could aim to use a 2k after you see the first one and try to interrupt. Of course, this depends on your character. You might want to use a 2s or like a sweep even, depending on your character. But being able to hit this fast enough, well, don't be like your boy is a pretty important part of fighting him in neutral because again you don't want to just block this uh, the other thing would be let's do okay so how to treat gunflame uh this is a little bit of a combination of a couple of ideas but gunflame is pretty long total duration as you can see he's kind of just stuck here but when he does it in strings like this like here's actually pretty tight, like I can't jump out of it. So we need to think of two things. One, to try to get him as far away as possible so that he will have to try to get back in. And two, if he does commit to the gun flame, then we can go over it somehow. So your goal will be actually to try to FD against some of these moves, especially like the last move that he does. Some people try to FD everything. And of course this has a pretty good effect. But you don't you don't have to. The main thing is that if you have a big enough gap, you can go over Gunflame and get a counter hit here. So this is an easy way to turn things around without having to directly challenge things like after his far slash, after his close slash. We can try to push him away and then get him to use some sort of special cancel, and we can guess there instead. Kyle. So Kyle. We must review the food arc countermeasure. Your goal will be to not block this move crouching under any circumstances. You want to block this move standing. When you stand block it, he is minus one. So instead of getting hit here, he'll counter hit me 100% of the time. Instead, you will counter hit him as long as you match fast. So this changes in shock state where this becomes plus four now. So here you're kind of boned. So in shock state, your actual goal would be to try to hit this move, preferably with something fast like a 5p. By the way, this is never a string that we use, but. <laughs> but your goal here would be to hit him out of that one because you really don't want to block him in shock state. That's just another. Uh, chance at him being advantage that we don't want him to have right so for food work remember when you're not in shock state block it high when you are in shock state just consider like okay this move can come i need to try to interrupt it if possible 6p is not the way by the way because of how hit how deep this move hits you want to use a fast move like jab or like 5k something like that the next would be how to fight his dps how to fight his dps Kyle, in particular, has a slower DP than other characters with DPs. So, like, Leo, Soul, and Chip, they all have 7 frame DPs. Lord Kyle here has a slower DP. I forget the exact number. So, this one, the slash one is 11. This one is 13. So, there are... There's a couple things you can think about as far as this move. So, one, it is... It is just way easier to safe jump this move compared to other moves. So... Uh, you don't have to be as precise 
to safe jump it. It's 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 honestly just trivial to safe jump this, which is kinda nice. Also, characters like Happy Chaos, probably Jacko, definitely Axel. Characters are just like really low profile 2Ks. You can use 2K and like go under this move. There it is, yeah. So this takes a little practice, but it's just another option that you have against this move. So main thing to keep in mind, it's really slow, easy to safe jump. So for May, we're gonna talk about Dolphin once again. Uh, we all remember the just 6P to Dolphin, but it's actually legit right now, but let's talk about like how you deal with her Dolphin pressure. So there's three things you're gonna try to keep in mind against Dolphin. So the S Dolphin is minus five on block, which makes it minus two on hit. This is plus five. Uh, so one is that the H Dolphin is like 25 frames. So there are very few, actually really, the only realistic one you're gonna see a lot that's guaranteed is this, this charge six H into H Dolphin. Besides that, the minimum gap you would have would be for something like this, which is uh, off the top of my head, seven frames, which means you can jump out of it. So how you deal with this depends on your character and what you're gonna be thinking about. You don't really wanna block H Dolphin because it's plus five. Uh, if your character has a high jump, you can actually try to do something like this. I've... Actually, it doesn't. It actually, doesn't matter whether or not your character has a high jump for this. Okay, got it. So here we have pretty common string. This is S Dolphin, and then this is delayed S Dolphin, and then this is H Dolphin, right? So, so here, since the S Dolphin is minus five. That means it's minus two on hit. So when main doesn't have meter, actually, your your safest countermeasure is actually to legitimately just hold up against everything because the S Dolphin will be minus. And then this one is still minus even though you got hit. And then if she ever chooses to do the H Dolphin, May for the culture, then you just jump out. So this, you'd have to see what type of punish you would get for the H Dolphin. Uh, this definitely varies by character, and in the case of blocking the S Dolphin, you need a response as well because she has a she has a whole guessing game off this where she has options like, say, backdash Dolphin again, backdash 6P, jump 4, jump H uh, as some core options here, or she could wait as well. This is really important to check uh, how well you do against May. Uh, a really big factor is how well, how good is your character at punishing the dolphin situation and as in like when she's doing it actively, so like a string into it. And how good are you after you block S dolphin? When you block H dolphin, she's plus five, so it's like, you know, it's plus five, like what are you going to do? Now, against this, you, if possible, you want to try to IBFD it if you end up stand blocking at FDing you're still in a pretty good situation. Uh, this is one of those, you can't do anything, so you might as well try this anyway. Like, is she really going to like murder you for attempting to go for IBFD? Not really. Uh, though, worst case scenario, you get hit, but you should be aiming for like right before it hits you. So at worst, you really should get a stand FD here like this. The next thing I would talk about is just her neutral in general. So. Your goal against May, if you're having problems against May, is twofold. So May is fast, but like her pokes are more kind of a uh, counter pokes rather than right. Like, so she, May players might pull up on you, but her real strength is like hitting your hitboxes, not like trying to hit you. You know what I mean? So the ideal range to play against May is right around, right about here is the, the ideal range. This means that S Dolphin won't reach you, so you don't have to worry about like random dolphins hitting you so much. And then H Dolphin's not really a factor, Beach Ball's not really a factor. Uh, you won't, you generally won't get hit by strays, and you'll be able to see her air dash and be able to anti air it. So, this is probably the ideal spacing you want to be at. When you're inside this range, so when you're inside here, so let's say here, you want to recognize that. She is basically charging all the time, and the enemy may 
doesn't necessarily confirm their whiffs. So what I mean is they, they let's say if they were here and you ran into 2S, they would do like 2S into Dolphin. So uh, this, this is some of the old Guilty Gear because they do, the main players in Exer do this too. So they will whiff the 2S and then do Dolphin anyway. So just because they whiffed the button, you shouldn't be thinking, ah, I need to whiff punish me. You need to be thinking, ah, I need to get ready to hit Dolphin. So the actual normal she did doesn't matter because it's not going to reach you anyway, right? So instead, when we see this whiff, we just get prepared to snipe her out of the air. So Chip, first we have to talk about the Reckless. So similar to May, Chip also has this type of guessing game, but his is a little bit harder because he has really large delay cancel windows on this. But you need to remember that this is minus four and this is minus six, which means this is minus one on hit and this is minus three on hit. So as long as he, as he doesn't have meter, you can challenge. Now, the main thing is you don't really want to challenge with buttons, mostly because this is medium counter hit. This, this is the main thing that keeps people kind of in check here. So there's a couple of ways you can go about dealing with this. So one, if you're privileged, I think there's only two characters in the game that has this, but there, are, I think it's just Giovanna and Kyle. Uh, but they can actually punish this with 2k from max range without doing like anything special. Most characters can't do this though, so one thing you can go for is you could try to instant block the second hit of the Rekka. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty hard, only mainly because it's a variable timing. But the good news is he's minus no matter what. So I usually try to, when I do it, I usually try to do it by buffering a dash first so I can get closer. Also, the second hit is only two frames active to my memory. So that means you could backdash it pretty reliably, even with characters with four frame invincible backdashes. Now, since they're both minus as well, there's nothing wrong with holding up because again, here, he is minus three, so who cares? You're, you're fine. You're shown. If he commits to this, he's minus six, so you're basically guaranteed to take to the air. So you can try to air dash back, air dash over him, and get some space. Once he does this, uh, his only Rekka option to finish is this. So if they, if they show this at all, uh, this one's a pretty big risk. The main reason they would do this without meter is... For, for characters like Geo who have the guaranteed 2k, because you have to mash out that 2k. The good news is too, because this is really negative, you can use BRC, you can use BRC drift at him uh, also to uh, help you deal with the situation and see what he's going to do as a follow-up. So the main, your main takeaway should be whatever you end up challenging with, try not to challenge Rekka 1 with a button because Rekka 2 is going to murder you. Try to use uh, like more passive options that he has to really overextend for. And then remember too that his second record is minus six, so that's a fine place to challenge on. Then we gotta talk about just general neutral. So this character is just a god of neutral. There's, there's not much else to say. He's really, really fast. This move is nine frames and his esports is very big. This move, not only is this move good, like fast and good, but it has the thing that I really hate, which has a whiff cancel on it. So even if you go over it, you still have to block it in the air, or maybe you misspaced a little bit and then you got counter hit by this. This move is really good too. All these moves are really annoying, frankly. So the the main thing about him is that since he's so fast, you can't commit too hard against him. So your main thing you really want to aim for is to use a lot of lows, especially if your character has like a good 2k. Uh, and in general, you should be poking with moves that have very, very low total duration so that the chip player can't see it very easily. So if you're like a Zato player, try using 5p and 2p. Melia, 2k, Geo, 2k, Kyle, 2k, and 2s. You use moves like that. Uh, if you're going to use a move with more total duration, uh, Geo's a little bit special, of course, because she has this, right? But if you have like a Kyle 2s, you want to make sure you really try to hit him with the 2s and not with it. But with 2k, it's fast enough and safe enough that you should, emphasis on should, be fine. Now, once you get to this point, he's going to start maybe mixing not just this and this, but he might add this. So his air dash, he acts faster than other characters. So if you have a fast 6p, then you could just 6p it normally. Uh, but if you are cursed like Geo and you and you can't, I'm getting lucky here, by the way. 
Normally that's what happens. So if you if you can't anti-air him very easily, then you can aim to meet him airless air with whatever button. So Geo, I use JS. I know Zato players use uh, JK. This is pretty reliable to intercept him because you have to remember if he does IAD, you have to take the IAD startup plus the startup of the air move. So your rising air move should basically always win. You can see the return is, is out of control though, if you can get this. All right, so next is my own main, Milia. So one, this is one that people have kind of not, it's been done more, but this is a pretty important countermeasure. It's about when you block her sweep, uh, almost every character in the game can punish this with super and she can't really do anything about it. Um, Cause her, her sweep is minus 11 on blocks. It's been like this basically since the game has come out, but uh, people just don't do it very often. It happens in tournaments a good amount, but it's just something you should keep in mind. It changes how it should change how they set up their mix up when you have a 50 meter. So this one's pretty important. It's a nice easy hit if you have meter. It discourages them from uh, doing the string. And one of the hardest parts is like she can't she can't even like confirm the single 2K normally. Like she has to go into the 2K 2D. Even though there's a gap in between 2K 2D. It can be hard because of how fast 2k is total. I think it's total duration is like 21 or something frames like that. Where the sweep, you, have, you the defender, have plenty of time because you'll see the entire 2k. And you go, oh, the only thing I can come here is 2k 2d. And then 2d comes and then you just do it. <laughs> you just do it. So this one's a nice little easy W. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is this setup right here. I've talked about this a few times, but it definitely belongs in this video. To be honest, I need to practice this like at least once a week. Some million players like to be really cheeky and do little tricks here. So if you watch a stream, of course, you definitely know about this, but there's a timing where you can uh, fuzzy jump out of all of these. You do it by holding back and then delay your jump so that you won't get thrown, you won't get hit by 2K, and you won't get hit by cross. Uh, again, though, I think you have to practice this, like decently often because uh, I mess this up <laughs> quite a bit, but I don't practice it that much. Um, it's definitely worth learning though, because you want them to do... She has like actual mix-ups off throw, so you want them to go for those and not like these type of tricks. So next, Axel. Axel, Axel, Axel. So, Axel, we're going to start with 2H, right? 2H, this is a very scary move from him. It's pretty fast, and it has a really long range, and it's heavy countered it. But it has a very large weakness in that it is double digit minus and has really long total duration. So after blocking this, you should you should press. You should try to move forward and do more stuff. Don't be too scared of this move. So when you're at like his ideal range, which is here, you should be scared of it coming because it's essentially instant. Like you can't see it. But if he, uh, let's say he whiffs this. So you see how it has a very long total duration, like that was a punish. So if you go over it, very easy. But also if you block it, again, he is above, I want to say it's like minus 11 or 13. I don't remember the exact number, but it's more than minus 10. So you can push, you can pull up on him and his uh, special cancel options are not so great. So this is from his max range, right? So. Run 10 is pretty slow in this game, so you don't have to worry about getting hit here. Uh, if you're brave, you've got that. Then this doesn't do anything at that range besides just go back to the 2H range. This is kind of a jump scare. They're not going to get this on you if you're awake. And then here it is whiffed, which would mean that. So if I had like a random thing going on here, that's fine. Oh, spooky. So you can see it's, it's rough for him in that spot, especially if you play a faster character. Then the other thing we gotta talk about is my favorite button with this character, so 2K. 2K, the button I get mean for, cause I play him versus Leo and I press this button quite a bit, but it's exceptionally good. So he's very low profile, it's five frames, so it goes really low. Uh, sweep is pretty reliable after this. And even in cases that sweep would whiff, 
uh, if he does hit this, uh, he can combo out of it. Both 5k and 2k here. 2k both in neutral and on defense. So in, in neutral, if your character relies a lot on jumping to get in, you need to use a move that hits deeper to make sure that you can hit this 2k. Uh, in Geo's case, I'd probably use like something like this. You may have to delay your normal. This is one you have to really test on your own. This is why I uh, use it so much against Leo. So, you know, I got got a couple DMs about this, got a couple of meme messages about like my Axel's really autopilot or like people are just running into stuff when I play Axel versus Leo. But when you actually break it down, this move is really tough for Leo to deal with. Now the thing is, Axel can reliably anti-air all of these buttons with 2k so it, it's actually pretty difficult for leo leo has to really adjust his jump in to even try to hit axel for doing this so let's try to get axel crouching here and we we'll say something like this right this might still whiff by the way okay still whiffed maybe this i'm trying to do it super late that's that might Still got him, okay. But in a match, in a match, I could get hit by this. Right? There's a chance, a small chance. So if they start doing that, then you have the opportunity to do this here, which is uh, really nice. Uh, and this makes it so you don't have to play like this game so much. This move is really committal, where this one is, as you can see, it's not committal. So you will need to make sure that you know how easy it is it for Axel to go under your jump in with 2K. Uh, but on defense, it's also con uh, consideration as well because it's very low profile, so it can go under stuff. I don't think it goes under this. I think Leo is esports. Oh. oh. I mean, I think I'm winning speed here. Uh, it goes under things that uh, other moves don't, and it's very fast. So you'll need to use moves like, let's say, for Leo, let's say, close slash. Moves that go down. So that he can't do that. Moves that reach really low or lows on your own. Or moves that low crush to go over the 2k. You, you will have to adjust your pressure to deal with this move. So Zato, we're going to do a very fun, easy one like Milia. It is about this. Okay. So and, and specifically here, we're going to be talking about sweep. So his sweep is minus 8. So if you're esports like Geo... You can get over there, and there's not really anything he can do about this. Yeah, it, it is minus eight, so if he gets pushed out far enough and he can't get there in time, he's gonna block, but all his uh, special cancel options are boned as well. Summoning guessing games would be next. So. Uh, this is probably like the main struggle for people because Zato has like a lot of knowledge checks and uh, how he summons is one of them. So he has a couple of, uh, I would say, I would say favorable guessing games for summoning. So we're going to do a simple one and we're going to talk about his 5H. And his 5H attack level 2, uh, sorry, 4, which means that, that this is essentially guaranteed. So you can't like mash out of it or or whatever, especially if you're maybe like a soul, maybe soul can mash out of it. I don't know, but uh, you can't jump out of it or anything. So he could just do that and do the guessing game off that. But if he does the guessing game off that, then it gives you the defender a little time to like recognize, oh, it's here, it's coming. The type of guessing games he would do would be, uh, for example, Okay, so that is to stop jumping. This is if he thinks you're gonna respect. And let's get it here. This is to stop mashing. Now, this of course loses the jump, and this is to stop mashing, but if you're using a, a fast move to break pierce, it shouldn't really matter. This loses both to jump and to mash. Uh this loses the mash, but this is basically a guaranteed mix-up if he gets this here. This loses a jump, but uh, mashing is, like, here is kind of weird. Uh, Zato actually has a bunch of ways of 
setting up drills that will make your match with. So the best way to think about this is you want to pick something that beats multiple things that he has to call out at all times. So generally, the two safest ones are just mash and jump for the most part. So if you get hit by this, you actually can't mash this anymore. And you can't jump it anymore. So people tend to hold this, but actually... So you can actually backdash this much easier when you get hit by the first hit. Especially if you have a 5 frame invincible backstab, you can literally just mash. Here. When he sets up this type of situation off a lower attack level move, he's usually much more direct about what he picks. So like, it's way less likely for him to do this, I'd say, like 2S into Pierce in like a block string, as opposed to something, or like, let's say like 5K Pierce. It's more likely he'll do like drills right away, or like he's really far against a character that's not good at getting out the corner, so he does like this. Against these type of summons, you can still pick safe options that cover multiple things but instead of picking mash you we want to pick dash block instead so if you pick dash block here right you run into pierce which means you go into this situation right away of whatever you want to do uh if he does nobody do you actually run under it uh this one kind of depends on your character though uh your gold lewis's of the world uh, Nagos of the world, you might have to pick something else. Again, you should check with your character. Uh, if he does drills, I'm like, oh snap, and I'm just out. And then, if he does a pose, well, you know, I'm good. And ideally, I would get... I'd get all the way, but Milia has a baby throw. There you go. So, building out these situations are really important, though, because you especially do not want to block this, nor do you want to block this. These are bad to block. This is not so bad to block. This, obviously, is not so bad. I mean, it's not going to attack you right away. The worst part about a pose is just getting counter hit into a pose. But for drills and the frog, you really do not want to block those moves. So it's important to have this kind of structured out. You know, so we're actually only going to be talking about stroke. So we have S-stroke and H-stroke we're going to talk about. But first, we want to talk about S-stroke. So one S-stroke is actually minus seven. I don't know why, but for, for months, I thought this move was minus six via some propaganda or something. Uh, but it's a weird move because there are ranges where your button won't reach and it's kind of ambiguous feeling personally. So uh, definitely try to lab out your responses here. Uh, this is one of those like, you might as well try to IB type stuff because of the difference in speed between uh, between S stroke and A stroke, especially after specific moves like say uh, 6P or 6H. In the case of 6P specifically, please, you can either just hold it because for the most part, you should be able to punish if it hits like here. Yeah, there it is. Yes, yes. I was like, yeah, this there's still an, an ambiguous range here. This comes up every now and then. Just side note, but for S stroke, and eight stroke this both works eight stroke is actually the the meme of uh just throw it so this moves plus three uh usually you see enemy you know do this so strategies one you can throw it two you can interrupt it but for the most part in strength throw is the most reliable because it's so fast if you do choose to block it you really want to fd it because that happens so Where as opposed to if I block this normally, I get hit. If, she, if you FD it, she has to do like other stuff. Even in the corner. So that's a really nice response there. The places you want to look for H stroke in particular are again after things where she doesn't have a lot of options. So 6P, 6H, it's cancelable in both hits too, which is nice. The, ni the nice thing too is that even if you don't have time to react with throw, you definitely have time to FD. So even if she's plus three, then you can make it hard for her to uh, continue her offense. Usually what they try to do is either stroke again or air dash in or something. And even if eight stroke is plus, it's not that plus that they get to do like this. They don't, they don't get to do this, you know? The last strategy, and this applies uh, basically to both, would be to both the strokes cause a stagger state uh when the game came out i thought you had to time this and it was really weird 
Uh, but what I learned, and I don't know if they're going to change this one day, but you can basically just mash and always get it. I don't know if that's supposed to be like the system. So my way of dealing with this right now is I actually just mash and hold up so that she doesn't reset me. If I block in the air, whatever, I just don't want to, I, you don't want them thinking they are mixing you up legit, right? So you don't want them doing things like, for example, is he's, that people will do. So if you if you theoretically miss this, or like let's say you don't know that she can't do this and you're scared, you know you have to maybe input fuzzy jump or something, or you could just mash and hold up all the time and get out 100% of the time and you never have to worry about it. So how annoying this move is definitely depends on your character. If you're a fast character, you can just let him chill. You don't have to fight this move very aggressively. If you're a slow character or a character that relies a lot on like for lack of a better word throwing out moves then this move is kind of a problem so the outright reliable countermeasure to this is to throw it but if you're a slow character you don't have to sorry if you're a fast character you don't have to do this so much mostly because like he his other pokes like he has this for example and they use this maybe they'll use this maybe they'll use this a lot of his pokes have a pretty long total duration, so if you're a fast character, you can mostly let him flail, and then when you see what you want, you could just go aim for it. If you are playing a slower character or a character that pokes a lot, you do have to maybe alter the pace of what you're throwing out and maybe not necessarily always do moves when he's in the spot where your move will reach, because if he does this, you're kind of boned. Using low total duration moves against this, is a really good idea so i think in Amelia's case the only one that's like safe safe is uh 2p that's the only one you can't like throw so if you want to run at him and like do something you want to use something of really low total duration so that he may not throw you notice on my kicks my kicks are really fast too but he still gets them most of the time so here it will really help if you use those as approaches you'll have to lab uh, with your own character to see what to do about this. Now the other one would be... That's not Fujin. That's Fujin. So Fujin, uh, one, I actually think this move is way harder to deal with online than offline, frankly. But uh, he has a couple follow-ups. So he's got the fan. He's got... He's got the hop. He's got the low. And he's got the overhead. So... Ide in an ideal world, your best countermeasure, if you don't have a DP, uh, is to uh, block on reaction and then jump when you see the fan. So yeah, your best countermeasure, if you don't have a DP, is to try to block normally. And since the low is punishable, you, you try to react to that and punish with whatever your character has. Oh, I jumped a little bit too late. This definitely takes a little practice. The reason why you, you want to kind of like delay your jump too is because the fan in particular doesn't have a hitbox until it pops like that. If you have a DP, you have way better options against him because he can't, to my knowledge, can't really deal with DPs after the fusion follow-up. Uh, I would practice a little bit to be sure too, because you really, really don't want to get hit by that raw, because that leads into a full combo, and it's not fast. So even, as long as you don't twitch or try to like OS guard, you shouldn't really get hit by this either. So Baiken, we're going to start with her legendary Tatami Gaish. So this move is really good at controlling space, but... It actually has a pretty big weakness, especially when people do this. So it is, it just doesn't, she lands before the tatami lands, so she's vulnerable. So th there's a big difference between like air dash back tatami and like, like falling super jump tatami or like air dash forward tatami. Like when she's going backwards, it's pretty hard to deal with. Like you basically just have to let her do it. If she's doing it on like single jumps or super jumps, you can definitely challenge her 
when she lands. And if she's doing it as an approach, I think in this version she basically like can't because of uh, how how slow it falls in this version compared to previous Guilty Gear games. Uh, then you have this. Let's talk about this parry. So it's very fast. It's, it's pretty strong when she has PRC. Now while while the biking players can do this basically wherever. The main place that I would consider parry to be a strong option you have to look out for would be in safe jump situations and in situations where you, the attacker, can't vary your offense for some reason. So this one's a pretty straightforward example. This is supposed to be a safe jump. She just smokes me, right? Uh, an example of a place where I can't vary my offense would be after my 2k. She can interrupt this, no problem. This, As I mentioned before, this actually does have a gap in between it, and I can't alter my timing on it at all. So I have other Gatling options, like 6h and 6p. Uh, the only thing that'll keep me safe is 6p. I can't delay at all. I'd have to do this, which is something you basically never see million players do. So those are the two main times you should, ex you should think about parry. It's not active for very long, so it's not very good against delay chains, but it's a good way of calling out your timing if they're like, oh, they always delay like that or something. I still hit. <laughs> I still hit her. I still hit her. So those are the, the main spots. I would say watch out for them. What would you do if you think she's going to parry here? So in this example, I, the, really the only thing I could do is just do another 2k or a wait for the parry. Uh, in safe jump situations, this depends on your character uh, quite a bit. So in Milia's case, I would use this because Biken can still parry it, but she has to change her timing uh, by quite a bit. So it, I think it makes it hard for her to pick when she should parry. Uh, for other characters, if I had a resource, I would probably run up and BRC the recovery to see whether or not they're doing it and then like attack. Okay, so Faust, we we have to talk about this move. So it's actually a really good move. It's a good like kind of anti-ground button poke that can be hard to deal with, but sometimes they do it somewhat high and his cancel options are actually not that great, but you do need to lab them. So he has two main, so he either do nothing, which is not that good for him, or he'll do, uh, let's make him backdash. you do bomb throw, or he'll do mix, mix, mix. So ideally, you have some type of countermeasure that deals with both. So for Milia, the best response is to dash, because you get an esports combo. If he does bomb bag, and if he does mix, 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 you're safe. Your main goal is to not get hit by mix, mix, mix. I just need him to do the bomb bag one more time, please. Thank you. So this helps a lot, of course, because it just heavily discourages him from taking his turn here. So it really does help to lab this free character. Not everybody can pick run as an option. You might have to do something else, but again, that is character specific. So just take your time on that. Uh, and then we want to talk about item throw. Specifically, it will be two ideas. So one, it's the total duration is really long. So even off attack level four moves, he can't liberally do this. Uh, my recommendation is similar to against uh, Axel uh, 2H. Use dash block against him and try to see what he's doing so that, that you don't get hit by scalpel pull. And that when you run at him and see the item, you can make your choice of, oh, am I gonna, going to attack? Am I going to wait because he got hammer or something? And then the other thing is, you should actually try to have a countermeasure against each item. So not every character will treat all these items the same. So he's got bomb, 100 ton, donut, banana, afro, meteor, mini faust, trumpet, and hammer. Hammer and Meteor, you can't like really fight, but for the most part, the rest of its items, both players can interact with. So specifically against Trumpet, you wanna make sure that you have something to deal with him running away because a lot of Faust players say it's bad when you get it, but they have many ways of altering their air movement up here and stalling until it goes. And he has good air normals. So between this and maybe falling with this, falling with nothing, using bomb bag, he has a lot of ways of varying 
his air mobility. So uh, in my case, I tend to use this to go up there. He's melee JD. You might want to see what you can do if your character in particular. Meteor is really, really, really fast, uh, but the pattern it lands on is kind of random. So I would just say, don't be too afraid unless you're already like really high up in the air. If you're on the ground, I would say just try to keep fighting or like try to move forward or something. Like don't think because he has meteors, neutral is like over, over the way it is kind of with hammer. For Afro, I mean, you don't want this because <laughs> then they turn into JD bots and the situation is really bad for you. So ideally you don't get caught by it. But if for any reason you have it randomly, you need to remember that they're going to be going for this nonstop. Like they really, really want this really, really bad. When he gets it, he will have a, a powered up version of his bomb bag. But also when he gets it, he loses head invincibility on his 6P. Very painful, very sad. Ideally, he does the bomb bag to get rid of it right away, but just keep in mind, if he doesn't have time to do it, you can rush him down quite a bit. It makes both you and him much bigger, so just keep that in mind. Banana, remember, it heals initially, and then the banana peels there. Donut doesn't do anything. 100 ton weight affects both of you. He, he actually has like some setups he can do with it, because it causes a, a guard crush. And then for uh, bomb, you just want to know which one, what move you want to use to hit it, uh, because it's not the same for all characters. And that they'll also, the opponent Faust will be ready to hit it back at you quickly. Just keep that in mind. So for Giovanna, we're, we're similarly, we're going to talk about special moves. So one, we have to talk about this. This is our 2 for k This move is very large, advancing, minus four. So very, very, very few characters can punish this. But we can build an option set against this move. So step number one is to not get hit by that any for any reason. And... The main way she's going to get you is if you use mid to counterattack. So you want to use lows to counterattack if possible. This means that essentially she'll only have a couple of options here. So she can do nothing and hold it. If she does the flip kick, then you just hit her. So no, no big deal. If she does backstep, you're gonna be safe. No big deal. Uh, you, you, you'll actually be slightly advantaged even though she's far. And if she presses 2K, then you'll hit her. So her pressing 2K stops you from pulling up on her. And if you use like a slower button, like I am, I'm using 2S. So because this move is, uh, if I recall, 11 frames, I can't actually use it here. I would need like a 10 frame here. I'm going to lose this 100% of the time. So that's what that's there for. So if they pick that in this situation, it's not bad. It's just that they think you're going to chase them hard. Uh, the other move we want to talk about is 2 and 4 S. So a couple things. So it's plus 4, crosses up, you have to block it high. TK'd, it's, uh, so Tiger Need is uh, plus 6. Uh, there's a couple of ways you could deal with this move. So in mid screen, if you don't know when it's coming, you can try to use the 4PK option select here, which will give you uh, 6P if she goes over or FD if she doesn't. That's one way. You can straight up react and press a button because it's not a fast move. It's just kind of a weird move. But you have to be kind of waiting for it. There's certain situations where you can fuzzy a 6P, so like put in like a delayed 6P. Because of how uh, her 2S works, I can input a 6P in like the middle-ish of her 2S, and then because the 2 and 4 s is so slow, I can wait for it off the 5H, because after 5H, all she has is special cancel options. So after 5H, it's much easier to see special canceled moves, as opposed to moves like, uh, say, 5K, 2S, far slash, moves with like multiple hits, or moves with multiple Gatling options off it, it could be harder to do. And then and then and then we have Axel, who, since his 2K is really, really low profile, 
you can straight up do this. So I believe like Axel can do this, Jacko can do this, uh, Testament should be able to do this as well. It is a little bit of a timing thing, but this is a really, really low commit way of uh, dealing with this move. Gold Lewis, Gold Lewis, Gold Lewis, Gold Lewis. We're gonna talk about 684 specifically. Uh, so a couple of small points you wanna know. One is that in neutral, you really, really want to whiff punish this anytime this comes out. You want to whiff punish any uh, Behemoth Typhoons in general that he whiffs, but 684 is one you're gonna see pretty commonly, so keep that in mind. It's also minus five, so when you do block this, okay, so when you block this, minus five, so that's your chance to do something. So he has sequences like, So in these spots where like you don't know when your turn is against this character, uh, one, you definitely want to try to FD these. But two, the turn is over when he does 684. So once he does 684, both you and him can act. It's only minus five, right? Uh, he will try to pin you down so he can get this type of sequence again. Your goal is to try to hit him or somehow, <laughs> emphasis, emphasis on somehow, uh, get out or push him back to full screen. Uh, and then we have drone. We want to talk about the drone. So how this works depends on the level. So this is the level one, one which is not too strong. Does not travel very far. Just two hits. Right. So level two travels a little further. Still two hits, but travels much further compared to the level one, one. And then level three. Mad hits, three hits, and then travels a very long distance. So it, it's more than full screen. This is what most of them do. They'll run behind it. So you see how like it eventually disappears, but it's after uh, it goes past full screen. So ideally, you just hit them out of startup somehow. Obviously, not everyone is that privileged. In the case that he gets this off, uh, running at him is pretty scary when you don't have meter uh, and, and he's gonna try to seal your jump with jump s and force you back down into pressure so my personal recommendation is actually just to back off and see if they go past the drone or not because if they do then he's just fighting by himself you don't have to worry about the drone and you can play neutral normally if they keep it on screen i think it's pretty tough to deal with you basically have to see when is he gonna go for the jump s Doing a single jump is probably the safest way of dealing with this. So AC, we got a couple of things to talk about. Or I, mean, or I mean, for this video, it's two, right? So one, we want to learn about 2S. So this move is really esports. It's a low that is really, really big that he just has because he needs it. So how do you deal with this? It has a pretty long total duration. So if he, if he does miss, you're usually good. But the thing is, he's usually going to be doing that. So... If you're not cursed, it's all good. If you're cursed, uh, you are super in trouble when you wish this. It's, it's fine if you play a fast character, but if you play a slow character, it's pretty hard to deal with. So if you want to challenge it, hitbox versus hitbox, you need to think about whether you have a disjoint that hits here or something that can hit his head, that can hit from far. So like Milia has, for example, she's got S-Disc, she has 6H, uh, her air dash is fast, she can get over that, or you can wait, because he's fast, but I wasn't fast enough. So she has that as well. So Millia has a bunch of ways to deal with this. You definitely want to know how to fight this if you're character, because, again, in, the, in this spot, it's basically party time right away. If he makes you block that, and on hit, that's a combo. So depending on their execution skill, either he is going to just get resources again and make your life really hard, or he's going to do a whole bombo on you and break the wall. So definitely, definitely, definitely have a response to this move. Uh, then I just want to talk about some gun basics because uh, like this character is hard to fight and it's, it's definitely one of his strong points is using steady aim. But uh, again, I, I just want to make sure that people have like their baseline of what they should do. So, 
point number one you need to remember is that Happy Chaos is his weakest at the start of the round. So if he hits you at the start of the round, he gets a wall break into win condition, which is really amazing. But if he doesn't, either he chooses to run away or you get away or you win uh, the round start, then he only gets to shoot three times. Uh, if, he, if he does a four steady aim shot somehow, then he's gonna run out. And he can't do it quickly. He has to wait each time. So he needs this and this before he becomes really scary. Once he gets this, and this then that's where we have this all right that's where he gets that but he all he has to both curse you and get the focus he can get it from comboing you and he can get it from neutral structures but for example i play a fast character so it's harder for me uh it's harder for him to get this off me on neutral compared to like a slower character that can't move like say gold boost or something so we want to really pay attention to his resource bar when it's shining like this he's got the focus power up when we have the green on us like this we're cursed i kind of wish there was an icon for curse uh specifically because sometimes i think i'm cursed and i'm not <laughs> sometimes i see the ball go through me and i'm like oh i'm supposed to be cursed here so i chill and then like i'm not and i don't recognize it for a couple seconds sorry whoops i hit the mic but that's uh something you really really want to pay attention to once he does have both power-ups uh it is not a good time but how you want to deal with this depends on your character if you're a fast character with good mid-range buttons like milia it's a kind of exaggerated example but you could just chill here and tap fd on every shot to the rhythm of their shots until they run out and it until they run out or try to focus here this is the spot you want to aim for so a little patience And then you pull up with whatever your character's got. This is kind of a guessing game for both characters, right? So it's it's favorable for him, but if you have something that can reach from around here that's very effective, uh, Melia, you can use 5H, you can use Far Slash, uh, you can use 6H also if you think 2S is coming. Let's say you play Kyle, you got like 2S, you got Stun Dipper, you got Far Slash, Geo has 5H. If you can, if your character is good at getting from here to here really quick, then that moment where he focuses again can be a very good spot for you to challenge. If you're playing a slower character, I think maybe you want to try to dash block, but if you're going to try to dash block, I recommend doing like this. Uh, it's It's... Pretty hefty on the FD usage, uh, but but the good news is you won't get the backdash bug. So like some people try to dash block and they'll get this because they do it too fast, and then they get hit and they get become really sad. So doing it this way, so that I'm holding KS so that I, it's impossible for me to backdash. So then I just tap dash and back just like this. So Jacko, we of course have to start by talking about 5H. So this move, I don't know if it was always like this or if they buffed it or something, but this move is, is nonsense, honestly. It's minus six, it's traveling, it's disjoint, it has a really good return as well. So there's a couple of things you can do. Her her lower body is kind of exposed, but like it's pretty hard to hit, so I don't actually recommend going for that. Uh, what I tend to do is I use neutral jump a lot against this move. And the good news about using neutral jump is that if they use sweep also, you'll beat the sweep also. And if she's doing like any other buttons, you, you'll you just be like, oh, okay, bye. Like, uh, uh, bye. Uh, maybe not. The other reason why, like counter it aside, is that since it's attack level 4, this is plus. This is plus 2 uh, off the top of my head because of the attack level being so high. So... It makes it so you don't have to play this game with her and you don't get counter hit randomly and you can see what she's doing kind of and force her to use more lower commit tools at best too she starts using this which means you could just run at her and not have to be scared of like this so much or running to this it's kind of nice when she has 50 meter she'll be a little bit more liberal with this because she can see what she's doing prc and do all sorts of stuff but still neutral jump is good against that too so you're good then it's minions, minion talk. One would be 
you really want a good way of hitting the minions for your character. It's different for everybody. For Milia, 5k is a really good button here. I generally don't recommend 6p. I know I see people do 6p, but I generally don't recommend 6p if, if you can help it in case you whiff. The nice thing about 5k here is I can jump cancel. Pretty nice. Uh, another thing about this move is that if you block it in the air, unlike most moves, you can move way faster. It actually does not have additional block stun, like special block stun, like other normal jump in. So you might know that, and let's have Jacko jump for this. If you block moves in the air, there is just a ton of extra block stun. Look how long it takes for her to actually get the opportunity to press a button. As opposed to, if you make her block on the ground, she acts really fast, right? So when you make people block stuff in the air, generally you force them down and they recover on the ground and then they could do whatever, meaning that you're usually heavily advantaged. But uh, for minions specifically, they don't have this property. I think it's because in like Exert and XX, uh, you had air instant block, which made you recover much faster than ground instant blocks. And you also got your air options back for uh, blocking moves in the air in general. So really common strategies would be like, oh, Air, instant block, venom, pool ball, and then move. But in this game, instant block is only two frames. So they're like, okay, let's not have this be a thing. And instead we'll have moves just have less blocks done in the air straight up. So this is very, very nice. See, even when I super jump, I'm still, I still get my air option back. So this one is really important to keep in mind because I see a lot of people actually not doing stuff after blocking these in the air and you should be doing something. like. She can't pin you down very easily, if at all, from this situation, because you get air options back always. Okay, Leo. Leo, you guys all love this character, right? Leo White Fang. Leo, we're gonna talk about sweep first. So, this move is a minus five. This, this, this sweep is actually ridiculous. Like, it low crushes. Uh, so, by the way, for the people who are like, how does Leo actually beat this move? It's with sweep, and it's heavy counter hit, and it advances really far, and it's minus five. So, if you're privileged, you'll have a nice guaranteed punish, but not all characters get this, unfortunately. There are There is a case where he does that. So if you don't have like a good uh, five frame move, like let's say Axel or something, I think the most reliable thing to do is just dash block. Uh, Cause usually to do sweep again uh, in this situation. So if you dash block, you'll be safe against the sweep. If they do DP, you just block it, you can punish. It's a little annoying that you have to play that game with him, but, you know, it, it just be like that. There's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing we could do about that, unfortunately. Uh, the other thing we want to talk about is this. Yes, Leo, Leo players and their nice footies, right? This move is ridiculous. It's a really good move. Really, really hard to mess with. The back turn slash. So how do we actually stop them from doing this? Because his walk speed and back turn is also quite good as well. So... The main countermeasure you want to use is ideally some long range disjointed move, but like at the tip of it. So let's see, for Axel, the one I really like using is this. It's really, really, really worth labbing this because uh, just in this game, they, they really did maintain uh, how his back turn stance worked from Exert, including all like the low total duration stuff and 5H uh, being basically instant and stuff. But uh, other characters have been tweaked or uh, things have been made slower and stuff. So it's, it's just really hard to deal with this uh, for a lot of characters. So I would highly recommend finding a way to deal with this because it will come, I promise you it will come up. And jumping is not the answer. So if you have some type of summon you can use or projectile you can use, Ideally, some like sub 18, like long range poke that is hopefully also disjointed. It's usually like the best answer, and you can use it way closer than you think to. As like as you see, it it is touching me. So I probably the ideal closest range would be around here. Nago. So first Nago, we gotta talk about far slash. I've talked about Nago so much already. Uh, again, I have a whole video of just defending him. A uh, bunch of things you could use to help defend against this character. But for the purpose of this video, uh, we're going to talk about bar slash and then also... Okay. So, 
One, you should really make it a habit to stand FD the second hit of his far slash again so that he doesn't get the poke throw without like physically walking up, like taking an extra step to walk up. This totally takes away this guessing game. Uh, I know there are people who like to try to IBFD this. Uh, I am not a fan because if you miss it, you're going to see your FD go up and get bit. Like, I know if you did properly, properly, it shouldn't happen. Uh, but I'm just not really a huge fan of this. Also, as you can see, I don't have the timing. So I just think it's just easier to just straight up stand FD it and then boom. Now, this situation, so this is when he has 50. Uh, I just want you guys to keep in mind that there is a gap here. So you can't throw or anything. It's a one frame gap, but this means that you can do all sorts of stuff. You can super, you can DP if you're a biking player. So call back to the biking section, but uh, this is a spot where he can't directly change his timing. And when he has 50 meter, you can expect them to spend it on this to keep their offense going. So every now and then, just remind them, every now and then remind people that they can't just do far slash, far slash, far slash and get this back for free. Just every now and then remind them, right? Uh, if you have a meter's reversal, easy peasy. If you need 50 meter to do this also, then for sure. This for me is like a once every three game type of thing. You know, I just remind them that they can't just autopilot do this to me, right? Then we talk about Beyblade in neutral. Once again, this move, very good. Very strong in neutral, instant, zero on block, cancelable into other special moves. Uh, there's a couple things you want to think about for this move. Uh, the main thing being that it won't hit you in the air, really. So using neutral jump is a pretty good countermeasure here. Uh, because the main thing he would have to do is either chase you in the air or use 2H. Uh, if you go above this move, the Beyblade cannot hurt you when you're in the air. So, so you're good. Just keep that in mind. When you're block it, it is zero. So the interaction after will be a lot of uh, hitbox, hurtbox interaction. My recommendation is ideally similar to the far slash, far slash. When you block a Beyblade, you want to be FDing it if possible so that they don't get you this. This thing is really annoying. When you FD it, it doesn't happen ever again. So if you're, if you're scared of him adding like, let's say one of these, so you don't want to mash and then you get bit, then I recommend FDing it. This is also a time where you want to pay attention to his blood meter because here he has less than one, but let's say he has like this much. Like if he has around like two and goes for it, uh, you don't really have to worry about the DP unless they are a, a huge gambling man. So that would be not a bad time to challenge. But for the most part, I personally just let them do it. I, I FD, stand FD if you can. Uh, I FD the Beyblade. And I always, this is always a theme for Nago. You always want to get them to the point where they can't gamble with special moves too much and that they just have normals and they're just trying to like basically catch you catch you with like a random hit rather than using the pressure uh, to mix you up. Potemkin is next, so special moves. Special moves is the play of the day. So I'm gonna talk about Megfist and Hammerfall in particular. These are two moves that are really important to know how to deal with. Uh, I know people would be like, what about my favorite gacha game, God of the Impact? But honestly, once you block that move, you're, you're basically just bold. <laughs> Frankly, like he's super in his win condition state there. So we're gonna talk about stuff we can deal with. So Megafist is one. So one, I highly recommend you have, you learn whatever punish you can for this. For Milia, you get a nice little 2K QD, right? Now the thing is though, he has uh, this. It's been a minute. So he has the car in Megafist. Here, it gets, the punish game gets kind of iffy. So you wanna decide whether you wanna meet him halfway or if you want to chill and just give it to him and go for the whiff punish. I find the whiff punish to be much easier, personally. So here he save, just move back a little more, boom. All right. I find the whiff punish to be much easier in that case, so just keep that in mind, you have to deal with them differently. When he has 50 meter, uh, blocking Megfist is really bad because he gets the PRC into this thing. I probably did it wrong, but he gets pressure off that so you want to be very aware of it in when he has 50 meter in neutral your goal is to probably make it with 
or intercept it. Of course, you don't want to block because when you block, he gets it. Now, for hammer pull. So, again, same thing. You want your punish, of course. Amelia has the easy life. Right? But you also want your your hammerfall countermeasure for when you block PRC into whatever. Uh, the best way to deal with it would be to neutral jump, in my opinion. This would be another one you want to look for. Because you just kind of get away. He's still going to be advantage, but it's much better than taking the block situation. Uh, if your character has a fast, big jab, so, uh, for example, Faust is really good at this, uh, you can actually mash it. But this could be, this is not easy for all characters, though. I'm, I'm gonna keep it 100%. Once upon a time, Milia could basically not do this. Uh, thanks to them speeding this up, she could do this a lot easier. Uh, I found this easiest with Faust so far. Another thing you can do, of course, is if you have meter, spend it. <laughs> you spend it and use that to break the armor. That is also a really, really good response here as well. I know there are people out there who say throw this, but I honestly think that is pretty hard. So mainly in matches, you'll see me uh, use neutral jump. And I kind of just get them to use the meter and I just try to get away. Some characters I try to just mash. The main thing being, we don't want Potemkin to spend his 50 to immediately get in on us and have access to his win condition. And it's something that comes up every single round against Potemkin. Every round against Potemkin, he will get 50 meter. And every round against Potemkin, they will spend the 50 meter to try to turn the game around. Especially if you have a lead. So being prepared for that against these two moves will help you out a lot. So Ram, uh, first I want to talk about uh, talk about buttons in general. So far slash and 5H. So one is that 5H is bigger than far slash. But then two is both of these moves are heavy disadvantage. So one thing actually, and this is something I continuously remind myself about versus character, is that uh, you need to not fear these moves so much. And you need to be able to hold your ground because... Like, when she does this, she has, like, pre I would say good cancel options, but the thing is, we know what can come, and both of these moves are, like, minus 10 or slightly more than that, and they both have a good amount of total duration, so on whiff, you can whiff punish them, especially if you play a faster character, and when she does far slash, in far slash 2H is basically not a thing, like, she basically has to do far slash special cancel options, or 5H. And after 5H, it's similar. She has to do special cancel options or nothing. So because of that, then, we can aim to uh, make it a habit to just try to instant block after blocking far slash. Uh, keep Ram kind of at this range and not back off. Specifically, don't back off. Because the more we back off, the more we put ourselves in Ram's win condition, which basically begins around here where everything she does is a combo, everything's gonna break the wall, or not, if she feels like it, and she's going to run her super strong pressure game that I'm sure you guys have seen a kajillion times already. So we don't want to back off, we want to hold our ground and not be super duper scared of this move and just play just outside the range of far slash, which means you're playing in 5H, and just remember, it's disadvantage, it's fine that she has it, we can use our single movement options plus 6P, plus trying to whiff punish to deal with it, rather than always running away from it. I know it's scary because the swords are big and she has a good return off it, but it will help out a lot if we stay here in this range and start getting to use more of these moves, right? Then we need to talk about Rekka. So Rekka, one, point number one is that this is minus five. So if they are taking turns of some sort, so let's say like this and then Let's say she can't actually do this, right? She, it, it is punishable. Okay, it is punishable. The threat it comes from the delay second record, but she can't actually confirm this without meter. It's very hard to hit confirm the second hit of record. I guess if you're a, a super juiced ram player, you got it on deck. I kind of got it. Oh, 
Oh, well, no. Never mind. I'm out of body. So the reason why I'm showing these is that uh, we can use this to think about uh, our defensive structure against this move. And specifically, if it's if it's a little hard for her to hit confirm the second hit. Uh, and also, by the way, for this Ram players, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, from my testing, I found it a little bit tough. Just a little bit tough. Maybe you get it with practice and stuff. And obviously, like, she builds a lot of meter off Rekka, so very often she has 50 meter when she does this. But she has options like, say, uh, one would be... So she has that. She has this that they do. And then she has delay. So that's that. That's the delay second one right so uh we can put it like a normal dash here sometimes they do this these all lose to one option you can just hold up <laughs> you can hold up and you can get away from a bunch of this stuff um okay so you really don't want to use this when she has 50 meter of course because she's going to destroy you because they're going to spend the meter and kill you and it's much more likely they'll do a small delay uh, record two when they have meter than when they don't. Now, if you don't want to pick that for whatever reason, because you don't always want to pick that, of course, uh, your goal will be to try to instant block stuff. So ideally, you get it on the first one, if possible. You might be like, whoa, okay, this is really hard to do. How are we going to do it? Now the way we do this ends up being because of sweep right so ram sweep unlike other characters uh has is attack level three which means there's more blocks done on this move than uh other character sweeps so for the most part like on average it's attack level two in the game so what this means is that this string here is all airtight where if she had an attack level two one it would not be airtight so here is another spot where you can try to go for the instant block. If you miss this, unfortunately I'm Milia by the way, a normal character would get that throw. <laughs> if you end up missing this though, uh, I think you can go for a second instant block anyway. Because if she does this, right? This is also an instant block chance. If there's run momentum though, so like let me do it like this. Boom. Then the last thing to keep in mind too is that after the first Rekka, each Rekka has a small gap. So Similar to Nago, if you have some meter or a DP, DP of course is riskier, but uh, especially if she has 50 meter, same type of idea, uh, you can spend meter in between the Rekkas. I'd personally wait for the second one, because uh, the second one is much more disadvantaged. The first one is minus 5. The second one, I think off the, off the top of my head, it's like minus 10, don't quote me on that one. And the last one is like just dummy, dumbest, uh, <laughs> dummy minus frames on the last one. Uh, so if you have meter... You can treat it like Nago. Cool. Uh, I actually had to think quite a bit of what I was going to put here for his character. I wasn't really sure. Uh, but I decided it should probably be fighting this move. So there are two lives against this character. You have fast characters and slow characters. So fast characters, you, you're just fast. You're chilling. For slow characters, uh, once this is on screen, your whole goal is to make sure they don't do this. So the neutral pattern that these characters use will be something like this, or another one to do is this. Okay, so you want to try to minimize the amount of times this happens. So your goal will be to either hit the startup of this by going over it. If it's out, then your next goal will be to just avoid crow. Yeah, so Testament, Testament also has attack level three sweep. So, this is airtight normally, but from a, a little distance, you can get over this because it has long total duration. So just keep in mind the distance uh, between you and Testament in these situations. So here, no, but like here, yes. Uh, similar to Melia 2, 
there's a gap in between the, the 2k and sweep but i again like like the million one i think it's it's kind of hard to see like chip also has this uh chip you can backdash in between 2k and sweep but i i, find, I feel like these are pretty hard to do unless you're super super looking for it where uh acting on the sweep is much 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 easier for the air ones you shouldn't actually be too scared of them it covers a lot of space but if you're on the ground already like close like testament is generally not like heavy advantage after this like you you can act the main time where it's really advantageous is either off knockdowns or like testament does like super super low and you block the skull really late so if they're doing like air fireballs you should aim to move forward on top of that too uh you can relatively reliably 6p this it's not like it's anti 6p by any stretch uh for crow so again your goal is to gonna is going to be to just avoid it when there's tracking on you um they actually can set it up so that they can have the crow move like a normal fireball by just doing it normally on the way back it comes kind of low at testament's waist but you can do it again and then you could fire it there so just do one more time Boop. Like that once you get in stain state uh it's very scary but in the case that this does get to you and there are like guaranteed ways they can get it on you like knocking you down and having the chrome to you uh once you have the stain state your main goal is going to be to fight testament with lows in my, in my opinion if you have a good low like a 2k or a 2s to use this would be really good mostly because uh this move is really esports and they're going to do it a ton more and if you're scared of testament and run away then they're just going to run at you anyway because they have huge advantage and they're going to put you in the corner in the corner testament's pressure is much better than mid screen so if we're scared of this and we don't want testament to just run at us then we need to try to use lows like 2k 2s if you have a good sweep you can use sweep along with normal keep away moves so testament has good range too this far slash this is 5h this is like 13 frames it's disjoint this moves really good um 2s is also pretty good in my opinion 2k and kicks are just esports in general but for the most part we want to pick lows be in case testament runs really far at us or use 6p it's 20 characters down the drain boom i'm, I'm also hungry